Hey guys, so this morning a new day has come and I'm going to rewire these to switch them around. Now later I'm going to put switches on here to make it better, but just for this one time uh, I don't want to change any more stuff before I show this switch. And then I'm going to put manually switches on a board and do this nice and neat. But let me just do this one time here for you. Get the meters out of the way. I've changed nothing since last night. Okay. So I've got to undo all the wires. That's the only problem. These wires up here that run the circuits and the, the light can all stay the same. But now I need to swap these two around and make this set parallel. Now I realize I'm having extended camera time here only because I want to show you that there's no hidden secrets or any weird stuff going on behind the scenes. I'm doing it all while you watch. Make sure I don't fry anything either while you watch. Of course that would be greatly entertaining for you. So this one is going to be parallel. I don't like that piece in my way. This will be parallel. All right. And then with these we want to take apart and hook up in series now. That up top. And I'm just going to twist these together. Like I said, I'm going to do this all up nice, nice and neat on a board for my future videos with some switches. It'll be so much better. So these are in series now. So now I want to take the negative of this set to the negative of this set. That'll be the last connection I make. So I'm going to leave this wire hang. Alright, and now the positive from the high voltage side will go to the positive of my load. Alright, and the negative of my... Or the positive of my batteries here, my now parallel batteries, is going to the low side of that circuit. Alright, so these are parallel. Just double checking my wires because I'm sort of sideways to the camera so it's awkward for me to make sure I'm doing everything right. So we got plus through to minus which is going to connect here and then we're going to connect the, the meters. Just sliding that in so I can see the voltages of the batteries. Make sure everything is good. Can you see that? Yeah, 7.28. So now these are charged. Nothing has changed since I shut this off. These are now charged. And now these in series are 7.8. Now this one goes to here. And this is going to now show these now these are at 3.46 all right again these are the ones that were running the circuit yesterday and these are the ones that were being charged. All I've done is switched them. Now these are going to run the load. And these are going to charge as soon as I connect the ground wire. And make sure I didn't hook up anything wrong. I don't want any pyrotechnics. The light should light. Now this will be going up. And that immediately jumped down under the load. Can you see this? I can't see my camera. I'm sitting next to it. Yes. Now you can see. Now these are going down. And these are going to go up. So I've reversed the operation. And now I'm running the batteries that were 
considered discharged the other day are now powering the load and the batteries that were charged are now considered discharged and they're being charged back up. So now at this point I consider it all gain. Again remember I had a narrow band from 4 volts to 3 volts in order to make this at all even possible within a few days. Uh, if I had filled it entirely and gone to fully discharged this would have taken two three times longer to run this test through but I'm using lower voltage ranges to allow this to be completed quicker well I'm gonna let that run a while and we'll be back a lot of it is just waiting for batteries to charge and discharge so my results are about the same 3.6 here I'm gonna turn off the meter because it drains the batteries so 3.6 6.7 just about where I was before. LED is getting dim but still lit. I'm going to swap the batteries again. Now, one thing I have noticed and it's consistent is I get about um, four to six hours run time. It varies uh, based on the battery charge and how deep I go. And then I get two to three hours on the second pass. So on the first pass, I get four to six hours run time. And then the, uh, on the second pass, I get a couple hours run time. Now, obviously, I'm expecting to get less and less and less. And also, this um, not charging the batteries and discharging them all the way, I have a very narrow uh, band of voltage. I only have a one volt difference between what's charged and discharged in my tests so that it doesn't take eternity to finish a, light, a cycle. Now I'm going to re rewire this up just simply taking these over here and putting these over here. You don't have to watch me do that. By now, either you're trusting what I'm doing or not. Now I'll be back in a minute. Hey guys, I've got everything wired up. I'm starting my third cycle. Now you have to realize I'm not showing a massive amount of power here because of my low voltage. I'm only draining these down between 4.0 volts to 3.5 volts, the ones that are running the load. I started started out originally with 4 volts, 4.0 per cell. And when I'm done, they're, they're only cutting down to about 3.5 volts. So I'm only taking half a volt range in each cell when I'm doing this, this project. And... Each set is pretty much now uh, 7.18, what is that, about 3.5 volts, right? Each, each battery set, each cell, 3.4, each cell is about 3.4, 3.5 volts now. We're at the point where all the cells are pretty much at the same voltage, but by doubling up in series, I can still get more usable energy and run the load all right so the experiment isn't over yet I'm gonna connect the common ground here and the light should fire up let me double check and make sure I don't fry anything this is parallel this is in series that's the output that's the output and should turn on there is my LED lit brightly voltage drops voltage will rise third cycle around Anything from this point on is all gain beyond what I had in the beginning because, again, I only used half a volt from these batteries the first cycle around. I only used 0 0.5 volts um, out, of the, out of the batteries from their whole energy capacity, their whole range. So it's not, it's not going to be spectacular amounts of, of power over a long period of time because I've intentionally shortened the test to make this even possible in a matter of days. Otherwise, I'll be here for months doing this if I was using fully charged to fully discharged batteries. I'm not here to sit there that long. So I'll let this run through until the light starts getting dimmer. And the batteries, uh, this will be dropping and this will be rising up. They're at 3.5, 6.92. And we'll let it run until that gets dim. And we'll swap them again and we'll see how much we can actually do and get out of them. Okay, I'm going to consider this done. 
the batteries still have charge. These are still at 6.6, .6, so essentially 3.3 volts. These are at 3.4. 5, 6, 3.56 volts. So I could still be running, but with diminishing returns because eventually the batteries are going to um, become the same voltage. The potential difference is only 3.1 something volts, I think, if I did my math right, um, between the two sets of batteries. So it's really diminishing. That's still going, and that'll work until 2.8. That's its cutoff. So anything all the way down to 2.8. I could keep going for a while, but I'm going to call this um, the end of this experiment. And it's getting tedious doing this by hand, so I'm probably going to um, put in some switches, recharge one set of batteries, and then carry on again in a more convenient manner. But I have shown that you can run a load on one set of batteries for a certain amount of time until the batteries are fall to a set voltage that you consider discharged or you can run the load and let the same electrons charge another set of batteries which then you can later switch and use to run the load and charge the other set of batteries there is going to be a loss because the batteries themselves will have losses inside charging and discharging is not a hundred percent efficient and so the batteries will have internal losses and eventually it will all grind down to a halt i could probably carry this on it's been hours i did not even look at the time this time but it's been a couple hours and i could probably carry this on for another who knows, another hour, and then maybe another 40 minutes, another 30 minutes, but it's very tedious doing it by hand. So I'm going to put switches on a board, and then we'll go from there. But it was a good experiment. Really shows that there's something going on here that's unique and interesting. And I believe I've seen a longer run time doing this than I would have with just running the set of batteries uh, alone at the certain voltages I used. That's key. Don't don't forget that the voltages I set and I considered charged and discharged. So there you go. Please do like this video. Check out the article. I got the links down below. And stay tuned for more cool and exciting videos in this series.